there's no doubt that we are coming out of this with that pent up dem demand now starting to be real. We, we're seeing that in bookings, we're seeing that in tra trading, and that is primarily because the travel restrictions have been removed. So you know, you know, and I think you have asked me this before as well, that look, will people come back and ever travel to the same extent coming out of the pandemic? Well, we can see it now. When restrictions are being removed, that demand is taking place. But are you seeing the, sh the, the trends or the shifts within those trends, i.e. fewer business travelers, more to certain destinations? Are you having to make decisions about fleet deployment, route changes quickly? Yes, so, so this follows what, what we have always said. We know from previous you know, situations and, and crises, whether that is 9-11 and the great financial uh, you know, crisis we had at the, you know, in 2007, 2008, that uh, leisure travel will come back before business travel will do. And we're gonna see uh, also that short haul will come back quicker than, than the long haul has been doing. But what we're seeing is that when you're looking around for business travel as an example, we are actually back to the same percentage of business travel that we had prior to the pandemic. Why? Because EasyJet is overrepresented in those business segments where people are going to, they have to go to plants, they have to physically go somewhere uh, and not, cannot be replaced by a team or Zoom meeting. So if you now move forward, do you continue to invest or expand in the business side, or do you basically say, hold the line, we're going for travel leisure? No, no, we, we, we are continually going to focus also on business travel. Look, we're Europe's largest airline into leisure destinations, but the business travel has always been a, you know, quite a big chunk of what we're doing. And I think particularly also now, large companies, large corporations, they are more constricted and restricted by travel policies that's been in place there. SMEs, small, medium-sized businesses, they don't have those restrictions. They have started to travel much more relative to the large corporations. EasyJet is overrepresented in, in that segment. So that's one thing that goes to our advantage. The second part is also sustainability. You know, there, there are among the large corporations, there's also now much more directional that you have to choose the airline and the product and service that has the least amount of, 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 of uh, pressure on the environment. You, and because of the carbon offsetting, we are coming out as a preferred airline in many cases. Are you finding passengers looking at this? I mean, isn't this one of those things everybody says, oh yes, very important, and then just does, they don't offset. They don't make uh, changes. They just do what they were doing anyway. No, uh, they, they look at this, but they expect the companies to deal with the consequences and the impact you have on the environment. They're not necessarily themselves to pay directly for this, but they, it's clearly a preference when they see that the company with a credible number of actions are taking initiatives that reduces the impact of the environment. You take our carbon offsetting program as an example. We, we know that there's about eight to nine percent more likeliness of those who are aware about the program there are choosing us over other airlines, everything uh, else being equal. So we know they care about them, but they do expect the companies to deal with it. Give me an idea of, of what really irks you, what really annoys you. I mean, as you're coming out of one crisis and going into the next crisis, and you're having to deal with that while regulators, and what really pisses you off? I mean, when you're coming on to things like, you know, the single European sky, which would, for easy death, immediately deliver a 15% carbon reduction on its totality. That was a proposal that came out in 99. And it said at that time that, look, you know, this will take 20 years to implement and we have really got nowhere on this. So what I'm really upset about in a way, if to use that word, is that you know, some governments who are sometimes pointing fingers to say, well, this industry is slow to decarbonize, they are also the ones who's blocking the introduction of something that could deliver a 15% carbon reduction on aviation you know, tomorrow, if that happens. That, that disturbs me. Single European skies will not have happened by the time either you or I retire. When do you plan to retire? Soon or? No, listen, we don't know that. But, but I think that there is something coming out of where we stand today, where sustainability is so much important for the right reason. And you've got to look around to say, look, what are the measures, what are the levers in here? 
But I think in these cases, it's been blocked by member stems who've been hold and held hostages to small groups who just doesn't want to do the change.